Hi there, my name is Valur and I'm your friend in Reykjavik and we do all kinds of walking tours and experience here in Reykjavik. Beer tours, food tours, folklore and, uh, and a started walking tour. Today we're gonna talk about the Christmas beer traditions here in Iceland. And this is my friend here, Sven. Hey! And uh, if I consider myself a master in, in beer studies here in Iceland, then he's the doctor. Uh, <laughs> He has been a beer school teacher here for 12 years, really used to telling people about the Icelandic beers and uh, alcohol. And uh, he even does online tours for people, like groups or, or companies uh, where he talks about beer and uh, in general. So I got him here to talk about the Christmas beers. So what is a Christmas beer, Sven? Uh, it's a beer uh, you drink around Christmas. Ah, thank you. Next, next <laughs> question. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, the Christmas beer tradition is, is uh, I mean, there are, uh, sometimes Icelanders, they want to be a part of Scandinavia and sometimes they want to be this Iceland, whether it suits them or not. When it yeah. comes to beer, it's, it's the Scandinavia coalition is, is better for us. Yeah. Um, because uh, the uh, traditional Christmas beers is something that we can claim in Scandinavia. Because uh, while the rest of Europe, maybe they wanted to have good food on Christmas, and then they were drinking their own stuff, their burgundies and beers and ales and whatever. Mm -hmm. But we wanted a special drink during Christmas. We wanted a better drink during Christmas. So we made special beers, special ales and all kinds of stuff uh, during Christmas. Uh, the Christmas beers, they came along pretty early. But uh, the first one I want to talk about is, well, it's, I guess this is going to be the only non-Icelandic beer we're going to talk about. This is Tupo Julebrück. This became like, um, a foundation like a mom for the rest of uh, the Christmas beers in the last century when they started because uh, this beer and let's just open it up and have some this is a this is a fine beer to start off with beautiful thought, red thought, color thought you would never do that yeah sorry absolutely so this is a uh, Tuberk Hulebrick you see the color uh, it's nice cheers mate Skalk and Skalk. Thank, yeah thank you for uh, letting me be here with uh, with my friend and your friend and, and Reykjavik well, and then the question kind of pops up well, because a lot of people, they uh, associate this with the Christmas beer. It's, it's a lager beer that has like um, crystal malt, has that, you know, that reddish color and that caramel, you know, taste and feel. But why, why was it? Why was that uh, the first one? Who decided this would be a Christmas beer? Well, these guys decided. The Carlsberg people that make Tuborg and, and, and Denmark. This became like a model for the rest of them. Basically all of them were a you know, different type of this. We like our malty beers, darker beers. We uh, had similar food traditions like the Danes. So we have uh, the glazed uh, smoked ham that we have here for Christmas Eve dinner. This is perfect for that. And also the uh, smoked leg of lamb that we have for Christmas Day dinner. So this is a perfect drink to have with that. The, the, the funny thing is that I don't know if many people realize what is by far the biggest Christmas beer in the world. Because this is the one the Danes made and, and we have been kind of following. And when we're talking about Scandinavian traditions, well, there were uh, Norwegian immigrants in Canada that, that really needed Christmas beers. And the Artois Brewery, they made this. Stella Artois. Stella means a star, it being a Christmas, the, the Christmas star. This is the Christmas beer they made for the Norwegians. So they didn't think it like the Danes about you know, pairing it with food. It's just a light crisp lager and it has done uh, rather well ever, ever since. So yeah, but I don't connect this with, of course, Christmas no, beers no, because, no. because I like my, um, you know, I'm raised with the maltiness, but it's a funny thing that, you know, Stella, one of the most popular beers in probably in the world, originally a Christmas beer. And, but it's true about the Norwegians. Uh, uh, in the 13th century, they had a law in Norway stating that it was illegal not to have beer on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I love that law. And then the Icelanders, they took it a bit further. Next century, there was a law in Iceland, they, they added to it. It was like punishable if you did not have beer on Christmas. Okay. So you were, <laughs> you were punished. Yeah, they, you know, not that, Do we have a beer there? No, God. So, uh, yeah. So we took it seriously. Remember Christmas, of course, uh, if we go a bit back, it was a midwinter festival. We were celebrating that we were halfway through the horrible long winter. So, uh, so it was a tradition to have a feast and, and drink a little bit and Okay, we just have halfway, we are halfway there. Yes, well, uh, this next one here is, uh, it's debatable whether it's a really, it's, it's not a fancy beer. What it is, it's, it's basically malt, uh, the old malt ale, non-alcohol malt ale, that is, has been allowed to ferment and uh, get stronger. So it's, now it's, 
makes the gear beer. It is quite it's quite dangerous in many ways because it tastes almost like just the regular malter. So skull, skull. So this is this is skull, skull. So yeah, it's pretty good. When this came out like uh, six years ago, I thought to myself, well, I have to mix this with orange uh, soda. You know, of course, of course to find out if it matches our original recipe. We did some experiments and we found out that two thirds of uh, this Christmas beer and one third of the orange soda would make the perfect blend. And I'm telling you, ever since, my Christmas has been so smooth. I'm, I'm, I'm so relaxed and with he, the he, sauce. He, he, he's, he's, his two children just you know, buzzing yeah. around. <laughs> no. Yeah, if the children get agitated, just give them some of this blend and they'll just fall right asleep. It's, it's wonderful. Keep your children drunk at Christmas. Uh, and you know, when they wake up with a headache, they might go, oh, and then you go like, you shouldn't have eaten so much candy last night. And you know, they will never know. So you do that on Icelandic parenting 101. <laughs> no, no. Um, but I, I would not go for a couple of these, uh, these malt beers because it lacks a little bit of flavor for me. It, it, it just reminds me of malt and, and you know, it's, ma it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's a mix, but... It's, it's, a, it's a mixer for me, but ever, nevertheless, um, they sell a lot of it uh, on Christmas. And the thing is that now, even after the microbrew revolution, we are getting even more requests and markets are open. And the next beer is going to fit right into that. Because when I was teaching beer school for the past 12 years, I always stated that I could sum up Christmas beer in one word. More. More alcohol, more taste, more spice, more color, more of everything. But the times are changing. So now we have a beer that's actually lighter than usual. So, so what do they do? They want to Christmas uh, the, the Christmas eyes. Christmas eyes. That's a new word. Christmas eyes. Christmas eyes. Uh, the different beers. So what what do they do? They put caramel in it, which is kind of uh, Christmassy. Yeah, this, this stuff. And mandarin, was it clementine? Or clementine. The, clementine. Yeah. The, the small uh, uh, oranges. So for us, that's a very Christmassy thing. So uh, so uh, they uh, made uh, a light version beer, light beer light ale beer, it's an ale, with some Christmassy things. So, so very light. The thing is, uh, the first thing we might notice is that it's not completely filtered. And if it's cloudy, it means it's more flavor, because a lot of the character and flavor and fullness goes out of beers when it's completely filtered. It's cold. It's so it's different. It's not Ulebrück. It's not malt. Not my type of beer. No, it's a. But my, my girlfriend would probably and uh, my wife would probably like and, this. And your girlfriend. <laughs> and my girlfriend. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> sure. uh, is this life? Well, yeah, yeah, it's life. Uh, so yeah, next next one we have is this is one of those I knew breweries, Reykjavik Brew. As uh, I really like those guys. Very talented. They made this beer called Ekofate, which means something uh, beautiful. Ekofate is like a, it's a standard text in the Christmas song. Yeah, it's a Christmas song that yeah. you, you will always get something pretty for, for yeah, Christmas. Yeah. So, so Ekofate is that. Yeah, something pretty, something pretty. Is it? So what they do with this one, they want to Christmas it, Christmasize it. Christmasize it. Christmasize. I'm going to I'm gonna patent that word. Yes. They Christmasize this one with uh, an Icelandic Christmas tree. They put some tree in it. So uh, basically they put a whole pine tree into the into yeah. the brew. So uh, you don't need this on Christmas. You can, yes. you, you can just drink Mix it into the beer. Yeah. You can just drink this. But uh, this one, let's just give it a check. So they put basically everything Christmassy into this. They said we uh, put a pine tree, a lot of small cookies, can of Macintosh, <laughs> which is like a Christmassy thing to have. Quali the quality tree. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a bunch of clementines to, to make it so, so if something is like the spirit of Iceland at Christmas. Uh, yeah, so next one. It's also an IPA. Well, let's, let's get it over. This is actually the time when the Christmas cat is prowling. So can I show? So. Christmas Cat, Yola Kisi by Malbec Brewery. They are situated here in Reykjavik also. So if you don't get new clothes during Christmas, the Christmas Cat can eat you. So um, that's why the Icelandic children are really happy about the, getting some soft packages, you know, the hard work that uh, the mothers or the grandmothers used to work when they were knitting. So uh, the Christmas Cat makes sure of that. Icelandic Parenting 101.
Yeah. Yeah. So this is an IP, IPA by Malbec. So the first thing we uh, see how dark and uh, you know unfiltered it is. We got it. Well, talk about decent beers. Uh, <clears throat> this one. Yes. Should we should try this one? Yeah, I'm ex actually excited to try this one. This is 8.5. This so, is so, a triple. Yeah. So this is a pretty new microbrewery called Burr. Um, show you the can over here called Third of Christmas. Uh, oh. So they have what they have as uh, the, the, these uh, seven original monasteries that make the, uh, the monastery beers in, in, in Belgium. And uh, they came up with ways to make a stronger beers. And so they made the versions. It was single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple. The higher the number, the higher the alcohol content. Yeah, and uh, they are basically doubling the the, the recipe or tripling it or, or quadrupling it. Yeah. So the malt. Yeah. So these are strong, usually, of course. This is 8.5. The quadruples can go over 10. But what's, what's amazing with these, uh, these are so mild, though. It is 8.5, and but still, it's uh, it's mild. It's not. You, you don't feel the alcohol at all. Not at all. It's a, it's a pretty balanced beer. I'm I'm actually pretty impressed. Like an extra day off, no family gatherings, delicious leftovers, and a nice cozy Belgian triple. So uh, for a very 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 good reason now, uh, we're going to talk about something completely different. This is for all those like it. These beers, uh, is, we have a, a microbrewery called Bork, which is um, a part of Olgeven, uh, the biggest one. And they have been kind of the leaders of the micro revolution in Iceland. But the, uh, what is uh, astonishing with this beer is this is an IPA, India Pale Ale, and it has no alcohol in it. No alcohol at all. And uh, it is uh, amazing, I think, because uh, for me, this is like, one of the trickiest things you can do in brewing is make something good and it's not strong at the same time. That's, that's really hard to do. So, yes. so cheers. Scott. It's like you have, have the opportunity to have a non-alcohol beer, but also with a lot of flavors and, and you know, a lot of charisma. Studies show that uh, one of the best things that, that, that men can do is meet their mates in the pub and drink beer. And uh, then so, when, so this is the placebo effect. Yes. yes. But yes. But the thing is that uh, it's about uh, the togetherness and your pals and maybe the act of drinking rather than the alcohol content of the beer that makes you uh, a better, better man, and better person. Like what? Uh, this is uh, next one is, uh, is the Einstück. We talked about Einstück. Uh, uh, Valor has mentioned it a few times. It's a great brewery. And this is uh, a double bock from Einstock. A double bock is uh, originated in Germany. Um, you know, bock is a type of beer made in uh, an area called Back. It's pronounced bock in South Germany and bock also means a goat. So this is German humor for you. So a uh, double, <laughs> double bock is... It is zwei bock, yeah, double goat. Uh, <laughs> double goat, double goat. Double goat or double bock, yeah. Uh, Einstock, double bock. This is one of my top three, five Christmas beers of Iceland. It's very Christmassy. Scout. Scout. Uh, then uh, uh, one of my uh, all-time favorites. This is Kalti. Kalti is, a, is the first brewery after the two big ones. So after the beer revolution in, in America, like around 2000, it spread over Europe. And uh, we got our first uh, microbrewery in Iceland called Kalti to the north. And you can actually go for a beer spa. You can also soak in their beer. It's a fun experience. I would recommend that. Scout, scout, scout. Well, uh, this is a perfect beer to uh, end the tasting. Yeah, perfect. So uh, uh, we do a Reykjavik beer tour here for your friend in Reykjavik. Uh, we are able to take you for a, a sipping of 10 micro brews and uh, visiting three pubs that we like here in, in downtown Reykjavik. And, um, and Sven does online beer tours. So if you wanna know more about beer in general or, or Icelandic beer, that, that could be an option also. But until then, skál, uh, gleðiljól. Gleðiljól. And uh, see you next time. <laughs>